This is Module 7, Lesson 1. In this lesson, we'll be creating conversion tables for length and weight. And we're going to go directly to our practice page for this lesson. The lessons, the, w the measurements we're going to be looking at in this lesson are called conventional measurements. We've already looked at metric measurements, but these are conventional. Conventional, and these are used primarily only in the United States. Today we're going to be looking at measurements of weight and we'll be looking at pounds and ounce, ounces and we'll also be looking at measures of length and we'll be looking at yards, feet, and inches. So starting with weight, basically the, the one thing we need to know is that there are 16 ounces in a pound. So ounces obviously are the smaller unit of weight and 16 ounces equals one pound. So we can fill in the rest of our table here by knowing that if one pound is 16 ounces, then two times 16, 32, would be the number of ounces in two pounds. Now to complete this table, we have the strategy we've done here, which is the number of pounds times 16. The other thing that we could do is since the pounds are increasing by one pound every time, and we know that there are 16 ounces in a pound, we could say two pounds is 32 ounces, and we know another pound would be another 16 ounces which would be 48, which would be the same thing we would get if we use some multiplication idea of 3 times 16 would also be 48. So we can continue filling the table out either by multiplying or by adding 16 every time. Pause the video and take a few minutes to try to fill out the rest of the table in the practice sheet. Okay, for four pounds, it would be 64 ounces. For five pounds, 80 ounces. For six pounds, 96 ounces. For seven, 112 ounces. For eight pounds, 128 <coughs> ounces. For nine, it would be 144 ounces. And for 10, 160. And again, we could have gotten these numbers either by multiplication or by adding 16 to the number right before it. That would work as long as the number of pounds is increasing just by one every time. So our rule for converting pounds to ounces would be to multiply by 16. So we're going to also look at measures of length. We have yards and feet. And again, we have a basic comparison that we need to know that there are three feet in a yard. So in the same way as we have two strategies, as we did for weight, as we increase by yards, we could simply multiply the number of yards by three. So two times three would be six. 3 times 3 would be 9. We can continue that way. Also knowing that there are 3 feet in a yard, we could say if there's 9 feet in 3 yards, then 3 more feet would be 4 yards. And we can continue that way. Pause the video and finish the table for yards and feet. Okay, as we continue, 5 yards would be 15, 6 would be 18, 9, 21, 24, 27, and 30. So basically we're skip counting by 3 since each additional yard would be 3 additional feet. So for converting from yards to feet, 
we're going to multiply by 3. All right, and we have one final table, which is feet to inches. And again, what we need to know is that there are 12 inches in a foot. So in two feet, it would be 2 times 12, or 24. Then again, we can continue and multiply, or we could say if 2 feet is 24 inches, 12 more would be 36. 12 more would be 48. So pause the video and finish this table. So for here, 5 would be 60, then 72, then 84, 96, 108, and 120. So for this, the rule for computing feet to inches would be to multiply by 12. Okay, you can keep this table handy as we move on to our problem set. Okay, for number one, it tells us to use the RDW process to solve these word problems. So let's do number one together. Evan put a two pound weight on one side and this, the abbreviation for pound is LB. So a two pound weight on one side of the scale and we wanna know how many one ounce weights need to put on the other side. So if we draw a tape diagram, one side has two pounds The other side, we want to know how many one pound measures there are. So we want to know how many we're going to need. So we're figuring out how many we need to add here. So if we have one pound, then another pound, one plus one would be two, and these would be the same length. So we'd answer our question in a sentence, um, Evan would need He'd need uh, two one pounds. Weights and it asks us how many one ounce we would need. So we know that one pound is 16 ounces and the second pound is 16 ounces. OZ is the um, abbreviation for ounces. So if we need two one pound weights here in ounces, it would be 16 plus 16. So we'd need 32 one ounce weights. So he'd need two pounds or 32 one ounce weights. Okay, you pause the video and try number two. So again, doing our RDW technique, who, um, Julius is going to put a three pound weight on one side and he's gonna put Thirty-five one ounce weights on the other side, and we want to know how much more he's going to need to reach the two pounds. So, in order to do that, we would need to find out how many ounces in two pounds. Three pounds, I'm sorry. So, if he has three pounds times sixteen ounces. 
the first, the one side has 48 ounces, and if he's put 35 on the other side, to get the unknown, we would subtract and get 13 ounces. So Julius would need 13 one ounce weights. So the unknown here would be 13 ounce. Okay, pause the video and try number three. So Miss Lipton's baby weighs five pounds. And four ounces. How many total ounces does the baby weigh? So we would have to convert the five pounds into ounces. And then add it to the four ounces. So five pounds times 16 would be 80. plus the four ounces that are already there would be 84 ounces. So Mrs. Upton's baby weighs 84 ounces. Okay, for number four, it says to complete the conversion tables and write the rule under the table. Notice that unlike what we did in the practice sheet, these pounds do not increase by just one every time. So we need to be careful in terms of converting to ounces. So take a minute and fill out for A for the conversion of pounds to ounces. All right, so for one pound, that would be 16 ounces. Then three times 16 would be 48 ounces. Then 112, 160, and 272. So the rule for converting pounds to ounces is to multiply. by 16. Okay, moving on. We're going to do the same thing for B. This time we're going from feet to inches. So take a moment to fill out B. So for B, one foot is 12 inches. So two feet would be 24 inches. 5 would be 60 inches, then 120 inches, and for 15, 180 inches. And the rule for converting from feet to inches is to multiply by 12. And then finally for C, we're going from yards to feet. So pause the video and fill that one out. So one yard is three feet, so two yards would be six feet, four would be 12, 10 would be 30, and 14 would be 42. So the rule for co converting from yards to feet is to multiply by three. Okay, so in number five, we're converting from mixed units to a single unit. So for A, we have three feet and one inch. So we know to go from feet to inches, we multiply by 12. So this would be 36 feet. 36 inches would be one foot plus one more. That would be 37 inches. 
K tried B. So for B, we'd multiply 11 times 12 plus 10 would be 142. Try C. So from yards to feet, we multiply 5 yards times 3 plus 1 is 16. Try D. For D, 12 yards times 3, 36 plus 2 is 38. For E, we're going from pounds to ounces. Try that one. So we're going to multiply 27 times 16 plus 10 and get 442. Try F. F, we're going yards to feet, so we're going to multiply 18 times 3 plus 9 would be 63. Try G. G, we're going from pounds to ounces, so we're going to multiply 14 times six, 16 plus 5 would be 229. Try H. Okay, careful here, we're going from yards to inches. So 36 inches in a yard plus 2 feet, that would be 24 more inches. We'd end up with 204 inches. For number 6, we're going to determine if the statement is true or false. And if it's false, we're going to change the right side of the equation to make it true. So try A. A is false. And we could change the right side to a number less than 2,000 to make this true. So we could change this to 1,600 grams. And now it would be true. Try B. This one is also false. 12 times 12 is 144, which is greater than 140. So we have to make this number greater than 144. So let's make it 150. That would make that true. And try C. C, we're back to metric measures and 10 kilometers, 10 times 1,000 equals 10,000 meters. That's true. And that's the end of lesson one.